Before we download some DEM data from um, the USGS seamless server, I just want to show you um, kind of the methods of a few different elevation models, um, especially if you're looking to work globally. The first and kind of most important is the SRTM. It's called the Shuttle Radar Topography Mission. Um, the Space Shuttle Endeavor around the year 2000 went up for 11 days and kind of ran this mission. And they returned using radar, which is uh, radio detection and ranging, right? Use radio waves. And it uh, shot it down, came back, and they, they came up with a, a global data set. Um, and they've been through a lot of different versions to try to make it voidless so that if there's a cloud, that kind of thing, you know, they, they've patched it up so it's a pretty good um, global uh, without interruption data set. Originally, it was three arc seconds was the resolution. An arc second is uh, one three thousand six hundredth of a degree, right? One degree from of of la one degree of latitude is constant, right? So imagine that uh, one minute of a degree is one sixtieth. So one arc second of that degree would be one three thousand six hundredth. Um, anyway that works out to be about 90 meters. Uh, now they're coming up with a version 3 SRTM which looks to be really great and awesome. They're trying to make it uh, 30 meters so that it'll be even better resolution and it's near global coverage. It's not the entire globe. Uh, the orbit didn't cover the poles very well so you can get it up to uh, you know somewhere around 60 degrees north and 60 degrees south. You know this is right around kind of Manitoba, uh, the top end of Manitoba right there. Oopsie daisies. <laughs> and um, so, but for most of the populated world, it's a great, great uh, resource. The next one I want to talk about is co was called Aster. And the Aster GDEM uh, came from a satellite that they, the Japanese government through their program METI and uh, the U.S. Gov uh, government program, NASA, they, they kind of created this program together and originally it was just to a, a lot more kind of remotely sensed data, so uh, temperature, um, different emissions, some false imagery, you know, false color imagery, different spectral imagery, so uh, the DEM was incidental because the satellites were in stereo, right? There was one here and one you know uh, next to each other so they could kind of get also an elevation model but it wasn't necessarily the primary purpose and and it's it's good from the start it was 30 meters but it, it, I don't know if you can see this right here this is a picture of a, a comparison between the Aster and the SRTM and SRTM originally was was uh, coarser grained but I think the ver vertical confidence is a little bit better uh, that's just me having used it. I, I haven't read too much up on all of the details about the vertical confidences, but you tend to get kind of a stipple um, effect with the with the aster, and you can kind of see that here. Sometimes it's true, like that big divot right there, which gets completely missed in this one right here. Um, you know, that that kind of stinks that we don't get it there. But then sometimes there are these kind of artifacts that I think are because of the process, not necessarily because there are actually that many ups and downs in, in, in the actual phenomenon on the ground. So Aster is great, but because the SRTM, the version 3 coming out, is about 30 meters and it's incorporating some of this data, I would say uh, do some research. There are some places where the Aster is even finer grained than 30 meters, but I haven't done a lot of research about that. In general, if you're going to do global elevation work, SRTM is the way to go. The benefit of the Aster is that the Aster includes the poles, whereas the SRTM doesn't. So Aster is full global coverage. So if you're going to do, see they're showing you right here, if you want to do Iceland, you're going to be kind of um, out of luck if you try to use the SRTM. But with Aster, you could get kind of a digital elevation model from Iceland. And even if there are little um, artifacts here and there, you can resample the Aster so that you get a different grain and you can kind of smooth some of that out. Um, and we'll talk about that in the future. So SRTM, Aster, and you can Google search it. There's a lot of information even on Wikipedia about these two things and they've got links that you can kind of you can follow and uh, 
NASA has a good um, good information about what these how these work. So beyond satellites, um, we now have this new technology called LIDAR. And LIDAR means light detection and ranging in the same way that radar used to mean um, r you know, radio detection and ranging. And, r and LIDAR is pretty crazy. Um, it, has, it, it comes as a point cloud. And what that means is that when a plane flies over a landscape, it shoots down um, just these thousands and millions and millions of just points and the accuracy is something like you know it's up to, it's like inches literally so depending on how high they fly and what type of things they're using um, and it has multiple returns so there'll be one point that hits the bare earth and one that hits the canopy of a forest and one that hits everything in between so it's it's pretty amazing technology because it's letting people build three-dimensional models of the earth and do a lot more complex analyses um, for our purposes, it just means that we can get we can interpolate very very high um, resolution imagery, meaning very small pixels from this point cloud. So the trade-off is that the coverage is much smaller than it is for you know these two global data sets. Right? There's pretty good lidar data for most of the coastal. United States and it, this kind of a patchwork of good lidar um, on the interior. The reason the coast is really good is that they're you know they're looking at kind of storm surge inundation and things like that. So most of the East Coast, um, you know, even up to maybe 50 miles inland, has pretty good lidar, but it's patchy and it's usually proprietary. It's it's kind of expensive because you have to fly a plane over to get lidar data. So you can search about that. The data set we're going to be using that I want you to know about is called the National Elevation Data Set, the NED. And this one kind of incorporates a lot of different um, sources, and it's curated by the USGS, the US Geological Survey. And um, the reason it's important is because uh, or originally it was just an interpolated raster from existing kind of data sets where they would use the the contours of the USGS topo quads and interpolate those. Now they're using they're actually incorporating a lot of lidar and they're incorporating um, some of these other kind of methods. Sometimes they will incorporate some SRTM data um, because the the interpolated contour maps were had their own types of artifacts and, and faults and sometimes you'll see that but the point is that the um, the NED is is curated constantly and it's a it's a great resource because um, you know it has a high level of kind of being updated pretty constantly so we're gonna download one of those and uh, what I'd like you to do now is go to, it's called um, the USGS Seamless Server. Okay, um, there are a lot of links. The one I want you to click on though is just the simple viewer.nationalmap.gov and they've recently updated it so there's a couple of advertisements about that if you go through these other methods but um, this one right here, go ahead and open that um, it's just a great resource. It's kind of one of the best places you can just find tons of data for the US. And um, you don't need to click either of these. It'll just load eventually. And it just gives you a map. And I, I love these types of um, kind of ways of downloading data. Um, you just draw the box and say what you want. So I'm going to zoom way in to I'm going to make a map of my property that I live on um, or I'm renting. <laughs> I guess this is dangerous because that means you know where I live. But okay, I'm hoping you found what you're looking for. Um, I know that I want a region that's going to incorporate kind of my neighbors' parcels and things like that, um, just to, so I can show the drainage and who's responsible for uh, how much acreage that flows into this marsh down here is kind of the idea. So in order to do that. All I have to do is draw a bounding bo box here. You can download um, a lot of different ways. I like download by bounding box because that allows me to select exactly what I want. So I'm going to say 
I want this whole area right here. I'll make it kind of like a square. And that's a lot of space, but we won't use the whole thing. We'll clip it once we download it. But I always like to download more than I think I need, just in case my extent changes, and that's a good practice to get into. So once you make your bounding box, it's going to say, what do you want to download? And you could do tons of stuff. There's, there's ortho imagery, which, which means aerial imagery, structures, transportation, land cover, um, boundaries, contours, anything you can imagine. Um, what I want, though, is I want elevation DEM products. Source data means if you wanted to do, if you wanted the actual point cloud, the .las file um, of the LIDAR, or you wanted you know, the source data is kind of how, where they made the DEM from. But I just want the prepackaged, well-made kind of digital elevation model just in raster form. So I'm clicking Elevation DEM products and I say Next. And this is where it gets tricky because the problem is we have, <laughs> we have lots of availabilities, right? And so how do we sift through all this garbage to figure out what we actually want? Sorry, it's not garbage. It's also, it's all really great data. Um, the first thing I usually do is I, I just look straight at the resolution. What am I looking for? And I always want the finest level I can get without having to download tons of files, right? So it looks like there's two available at one ninth arc second, which is the most, uh, the finest type I can get. And at the scale I'm doing, which is just the size of a property, I really want just the finest pixel I can get. And one ninth arc second looks like that's what it is. I can scroll down. Yep, I don't want 100 meter or 200 meter pixels. That's a little coarse. <laughs> so the next thing I do is I say, okay, that's the resolution I want. It looks like there are two, right, at that resolution. And then I look at the date, and I'm like, okay, these are the same date as well. Interesting. Um, I usually want to get the most current date I can, right? You might go down here and see, oh yeah, 1999, 2013, 2006. But then, you know, you look at the resolution and you're like, okay, well, that's not really what I want. Um, so this date is fine with me. It's pretty recent. Um, the next thing I would do is look at the format and I say, okay, the format .img, I can import that into QGIS. That's great. The only thing you really can't use um, easily in QGIS is, is um, our kind of Esri proprietary files, like uh, grid files. Um, so I usually try to stick with TIFFs or IMG. Um, there are a couple others that you can use. BIL you can use. Um, but IMG is great. So I'm like, OK, they have the same date, the same resolution, same format. Well, what's the difference between these two? And if I start to look at these, you know, kind of the alphabet soup over here of what's going on, um, you can kind of trace it up and you say, okay, well, it looks like the title of the tile is exactly the same as well. But then I see, aha, south and central coast. These are two different tiles, right? They both pertain to a similar area, but they probably um, abut each other. They sit next to each other. And there's only two here, right? If I saw 12 of these 1 9th arc second dot IMGs that are the national elevation data set, and they all had different names like south, central coast, mid coast, blah, 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 and it went down, down, down. You know, at some point you have to say, am I trying to download too much information at a high resolution? Because it might be easier to just go up one resolution and say, yep, I don't need this much data. I should just do um, one arc second, right? Right now, if I wanted to just do one arc second, there's only one file that they're saying is available. And this whole region probably fits within this one arc second because in terms of tiles, they can make the tiles bigger if the resolution is bigger or coarser because it's less information. Anyway. I know that these two cover my area, and it seems like they're going to be worthwhile. So let's say I want to download both of them. And they show up over here. Yep, I don't know if you can see that, but they're different pieces of the same data set. So I want to download both of them so I can look at them in more detail. So now I go to my checkout. You just have to give them an email address. Go ahead and place your order. Download it. And you'll get an email that looks like this, and then it says click here to download. And that's what you do. Click there, download it, we'll look at it in class.